I think you'll agree with me when I say that this year's WWDC gave us quite a bit to look forward to in terms of iOS, iPadOS, but also Mac OS. So in this video, what I want to do with you is share with you my experiences having used Mac OS Big Sur on my MacBook Air. I've been using this now for about two weeks, day in, day out. I want to share with you my top five favorite features of Mac OS Big Sur and give you a closer look at what's coming up. Welcome back to the channel, guys and girls. You're watching me, M. Kwan, here on M. Kwan Reviews. This is the channel where I talk about my passions, including technology and lifestyle. If you're new around here, be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit like if you enjoy this video, plus join me over on my Instagram account because I've got some goodies coming up that you don't want to miss out on. So this is what I've been using Mac OS Big Sur on. This is a 2020 MacBook Air. It is the Intel Core i5 1.1 gigahertz with eight gigabytes of RAM, as you can see over there. What I've been incredibly surprised at is just how well, given that this is a beta version, how well this has performed on this machine. Now, I also have a secondary computer, which is actually my main computer, my MacBook Pro. A lot of you have been asking whether or not you should install this now. I would say just hold up. If you have one main computer, hold off until this is available as a public release. Uh, just because there are bugs and there'll be other issues and you don't want that to compromise on your main computer. In terms of the features that really stand out, I wanna start off with number one, and that is about the redesign. So let's talk about that redesign. The redesign of Mac OS Big Sur, I feel looks and feels much better than compared with some of the other previous updates to Mac OS. We now have this uniformity across the board when it comes to iOS, iPad OS, and obviously Mac OS. Things look very similar to what you might expect. And I know this isn't going to appeal to everybody, particularly the hardcore Mac users out there that might want the operating system to still maintain a certain unique look. But I certainly am a fan of this because using an iPhone, an iPad, and now Mac, you get to feel a certain level of interconnectedness, but they're all unique in their own way and respect, which is really nice to see. There are other tweaks here, things like the app icons on Mac OS Big Sur look very similar to what you might find on iPad OS or iOS, plus the windows now within uh, different applications of Mac OS Big Sur, there's a certain level of transparency there. It makes it much more fresher, an open feel. You've got a slightly extended desktop now because the menu bar at the top and the dock down at the bottom have been minimized slightly. So you get a much cleaner open feel on your desktop. And the other thing here is that we've got now the inclusion of things like a control center, very similar to what you might find in iPad OS, but there are small things and elements here that will give you customization that most users will be happy with. So for example, you're able to drag and drop certain settings within the control center to the top menu bar. It makes it really easy day-to-day -day customizing, setting up to your needs. Another thing that I'm a big fan of in iOS, which is now very similar in Mac OS Big Sur, are the widgets. Now we've seen widgets in the past on Mac OS, but the widgets here look much more dynamic, much more colorful, vibrant, and they're actually better to use. So you can still change and adapt um, how the widgets appear in terms of size and information that they display. But one downside of that is the fact that widgets can't be installed on the main desktop itself. Like on iOS 14, where you can actually have that on your home screen, I would like to see that. I would like to see widgets being permanently placed on the desktop. So the design for the most part is pretty good, but there are one or two weird mind trickery that I found using Mac OS Big Sur along some of the other devices. To begin with, I commonly would use a MacBook Air alongside my iPad Pro, and going from the iPad Pro, which is touch enabled, to the Mac Book Air, which is not touch enabled, can be a bit of a weird mind game or mind twist. So don't know, maybe that's an indication of perhaps seeing touch enabled Macs in the future, regardless of what somebody might say. Another weird thing, which I don't know how I got overlooked, there are small UI elements in Mac OS Big Sur that just look like they were slightly rushed. One of them, which has been quite viral on Twitter, is the battery icon. This is something that really makes no sense to me. How that got passed, I have no idea. It would have been easier and better to literally copy the uh, battery icon from iPadOS or iOS 
into Mac OS. So it looked a bit more like this perhaps. Point number two, I'm a big fan of this, is Safari. It's got one of the biggest updates that I can remember. And Safari now looks, feels much more cleaner, faster, lighter overall. I'm quite commonly might use Google Chrome next to Safari. And I can certainly tell you Safari doesn't have that drain on battery, on RAM in the same way that Google Chrome does now. So it's nice to see that update. But there are a few other updates to Safari itself that really stand out. The first one is a customizable start page. So we can now get our own wallpaper. You can choose your own wallpaper to go on behind that start page. It's small details like that that just make an overall experience much more nicer on Safari. But the big, big deal here and something that I've been waiting for for a long time are extensions. They're finally coming to Safari as a web browser. But there is a slight change here. So extensions are only going to be available for Safari as a browser through the App Store on macOS Big Sur. There is a special section there for Safari extensions. But there's another element of that, which is that Apple are taking care of the privacy concerns to make sure that those extensions that you're using aren't going to be doing things that you might not necessarily want them to be doing in the background. So Apple have been really quite hard on some of the privacy elements there when it comes to Safari extensions. Number three, and this is pretty important if you use this application on your iPhone, it's messages. Messages has been updated on Mac OS Big Sur. And we've had messages in the past, but now it feels much more dynamic, much more kind of user friendly in the same way that you would find on iOS. So we've got options to pin conversations, group chats, but also much better search. And overall, it's very similar now as an experience, an enjoyable experience uh, using messages on Mac OS Big Sur as it is on iPad OS or even iOS. So the fourth point is something that might change as time goes on, but I've been really impressed with the battery capability using Mac OS Big Sur. There's a new feature in the operating system called Optimized Battery Charging, something similar to what we might find in iOS and iPadOS. And what that does is it teaches the operating system your charging habits to make sure that the device is charged in a way that increases the lifespan of the battery. Now this is something that using this daily now for about two weeks, I've noticed the battery performance has increased considerably as before when I wasn't uh, using this with Mac OS Big Sur installed. Now, I'm not really sure how that will progress as time goes on because this is uh, a relatively new beta. We might find that battery doesn't get as good uh, going down along the line, but for the most part, in terms of what Apple talked about, the battery performance and the health of the battery on the device itself should improve with time. The final point, point number five, and this is very difficult to demo in this video, but it's more about the future of Mac OS Big Sur and going into the future about Mac computers as a whole, because at the keynote event, Apple spent some time talking about Mac OS Big Sur, but they also spent an important amount of time talking about the future of Macs with Apple Silicon. And this is coming somewhere in the future. We're gonna be getting Apple Silicon computers that are going to give us the ability to use iPhone and iPad apps directly on Mac computers. Now, what that means is a complete opening of a massive library of high quality apps, not only on iOS, but also on iPadOS that will be able to be used on your Mac computer. And I think moving forward when it comes to productivity, for gaming, for multimedia, a whole range of other features this is going to really enhance what Mac as a platform can offer users and consumers. And that's a wrap. Let me know what you think of Mac OS Big Sur. What is it that you're most looking forward to? Leave your comments in the comment section down below. Plus, if you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video and wanna see more content like this. And be sure to follow me over on my Instagram because I've got some goodies coming up for you guys. That's it from me for now. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe. I'm Mquan. Peace and blessings.